everybody. Welcome to our, uh, our faculty research group on immigrant workers in Minnesota. This is our third uh, colloquium in our colloquium se series from uh, for this fall. My name is Stephen Filling. I'm the director of the research group. And uh, it's our pleasure to be hosting uh, Monica Garcia Perez from the Department of Economics uh, doing this uh, early morning uh, uh, presentation. Uh, last year she did a wonderful colloquium for us also in the fall, uh, looking at the uh, ways in which immigrants are making use of emergency care rooms uh, in the United States and in Minnesota. And this year, uh, she'll be doing a, a, another talk on a related topic on, uh, on health outcomes and comparisons between immigrants and, um, and, and, and native-born residents of, uh, in the United States. Um, before uh, Monica begins her talk, I thought I would ask Dean Ernie Budvarsson uh, from the School of Public Affairs to uh, introduce the talk, and then we'll proceed from there. Uh, Dean Budvarsson is uh, one of the deans, uh, or, or the dean of one of the uh, colleges that co-sponsors the research group, the other one being the College of Liberal Arts, uh, and uh, then uh, after Dean Budvarsson introduced the talk, we'll proceed with the uh, talk. So, thank you. sponsored by the Faculty Research Group on Immigrant Workers in Minnesota. This uh, faculty research group was initially conceived by Steve and myself, I think back in 2009 when we first had our conversations. And um, since that time, uh, the research group has, has really been quite a successful effort. There's been uh, several conferences that are put on in the spring that have generated substantial turnouts and a lot of uh, community interest, and this is in large part due to the wonderful work that Steve has done. Uh, I happen to do research on immigration, so I have a vested academic interest in the research group, uh, but um, the research group really um, is successful because it not only attracts student interest, but it attracts uh, faculty from all different kinds of academic units on campus, and so this is an example of the type of that, that is interdisciplinary in nature. Um, Monica uh, Garcia Perez, she uh, has her doctorate in economics from the University of Maryland, did her dissertation on um, immigrant proclivity for entrepreneurship, for entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial activities, and so she works on different kinds of research problems in the, in the immigration field. She's, uh, her general field is labor economics, and she has been a very active participant in the faculty research group. And uh, she is going to give a talk today on health perpetuation, the effect of parents' nativity on child health outcomes. So Monica, thank you for volunteering your time. We look forward to your talk. Services and a special attention about the health services provided to this group. 
So because there have been a lot of things discussed about the underutilization of this group of the health healthcare services, but also the cost because sometimes these groups uh, tend to use more of public uh, funds. <coughs> I decided to, uh, to think about the groups I'm talking about, the immigrant groups. I started to focus more on the children of immigrant family, which there's not much to say about. There's not much that economists, not only sociologists, sociologists, or other groups have done, but not economists that know much about the further generation. So now we're talking not only the first immigrant, but second, and even the third generations, okay? So children of immigrant parents are very particular because as any, any child, their performance depends also on their family. For children of immigrant family, depends on what are the possibilities and the access that the families have towards the services. So the parents' status, experience, information, behavior, culture, language barriers. The parents with poor uh, status face different skills, information than a, a child coming from a native born family. And access to different, has, has a lack of and then if we actually add to that that the child, the child itself, the foreign born is an old citizen, so we should, we should expect that this is the particular group should have a, a further uh, worse outcome in terms of availability or access to health and the use of health and maybe even health status. I thought, I thought I'd find something interesting. So given the current, like you know, there is a healthcare just right down uh, the first floor. Um, all the topics about health, there is a lot of changes coming up, but we saw that uh, those changes are going to take time to be implemented. And some groups, especially these groups that I'm looking at, are not necessarily going to be covered in this in the during this time. So my question, in, in, in to make it a little bit easier for you, is I want to see if there is an independent effect of, for instance, on PDP on the child's health outcome or the child's access to health, regardless of this child's citizenship status. So whether the child is no citizen or citizen, if having a parent who is foreign born does affect the probability of some specific things. So visiting the doctor at least once a year in the past 12 months, have an initial place of care, or the perceived health is fair, good, excellent. <coughs> do cultural differences matter? So I'm going to try to do two, two different, follow two different strategies. So the first one is use the interaction, <coughs> and I'm going to try to explain this because it's developing. So the race of the child and the parent, I'm going to try to combine the race of the parent and the parental and PDP as a, as a con, as approximation for cultural differences. So I know the race of the child, white, black, Asian, Hispanic, and I know whether the parent is uh, foreign <coughs> family, foreign born or otherwise. So I want to see what the interaction of those two information tell us about what is the probability of the child visiting the doctor at least once, or have an initial place of care, or have what is the type of perceived health, to have a good to excellent perceived health. And that's going to be a key element too. The second one, the second strategy is using parental reason of birth. So I kind of know, even as this is public information, what as far as I can go is the continent. So are these people from Latin America, are these people from Africa, Asia, Middle East, Africa. So I use integrated data from the integrated health interview series from 2000, actually to 2010, because I just updated for this presentation that's pretty. Um, they just come up in, in the north of Oregon two weeks ago. So I use self-reported, this is self-reported data, that's very important to know, on place of birth as, as well as in variety of sociodemography. So age of the child, sex and household characteristics, family size, um, whether the parents uh, went to school, uh, employment status. I use the, the data on the Congo uh, child selected randomly. So for each family, the interview select a child randomly and they ask many more questions in terms of health status for that specific child. Okay, child uh, here is, is uh, someone between zero and 17 years old, okay? So a little bit of background, this is not from the data, this is from my previous presentation last year and that's what, what it kind of inspired me to go, this table inspired me to go into the, this topic 
Because when I saw this, this is the US, this is data from 1999, so this is kind of old, but it's still interesting. Um, I look at this as a percentage uh, of people uh, given their race and, and citizen status, the percentage of people that visit the doctor. And this is without any control, I mean, without just an average, these are the summary statistics. We see that non citizens or adults and for children you know, have the lowest pr probability to visit the doctor in general. But in addition to that, non citizen children are the worst off group. So something is happening here, and I'm, even though I'm starting to, this is a very initial stage uh, research, I'm starting to look at whether, well, this is a different given the citizenship status, or just because the parents are foreign born or a combination of both, or something cultural that also is making this patterns uh, happen, because for example, the doctor visit, it's not mandatory that parents have to take their kids to the doctor. So it's a voluntary and also access to, to that service. So previous families have found that immigrants living in the US, this is something I said last, last year, are much less likely to be insured than natives. A uh, vast number of, of healthcare service research focused on children from and the use of care, uh, care. And they use the behavioral model of health service use, um, which is to look at the uh, vul uh, vulnerable po uh, population. So I'm gonna explain a little bit further that because I'm kind of following that literature, which is not economist, it's completely on the health uh, service or health uh, uh, related career. So some researchers have tried to explain the underutilization of healthcare service among the racial minority group by only concentrating concentrating on financial bar barriers. So I mean, whether if the family is low or low income or for the families the poverty line level, but then uh, whether the, per the the family lack of insurance. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that into consideration, but I think there is something more that is not only insurance, but it's explaining this low percentage of probability of using or visiting the doctor. If I use that variable as how often they use the healthcare service. So some have found they believe part of foreign born status and children access to care, and also found that non citizen children have more difficulty accessing healthcare and lack of usual places there. So to motivate the model, um, I find this, this uh, presentation of this part of the model is very interesting because it's kind of like following interdisciplinary part that I never read about it, but then I read it like, oh, this sounds very, uh, very interesting. So if I'm gonna try to analyze a group that I think is a vulnerable group, then I should start focusing on some variables such as the minimum variable, so does a minimum fam the, the individual to get access to this uh, service of family income insurance, whether it's the lack or, or having insurance. Credit crossing variable, so there is something that credit for the poor the person to use the service, family size or other characteristic of the family, where the credit crossing in this group of credit crossing uh, variable Nativity and cultural background is a, is a relevant one, and it's the one I'm, I'm focusing on. I'm taking it into account all the other, the need, the issue of need, so child's age, sex, need of care, because of the actual health status. So all these characteristics together should tell us something about what is the propensity of a specific or particular individual to use healthcare service. So, because I know I'm gonna have short time, but I'm gonna give you some of my overview findings. By parental nativity, what I mean by parental nativity, whether the parent, the family is immigrant or otherwise, having a foreign born parent or having foreign born parents um, and no citizenship for the child is highly associated to the lower chances of having visited a doctor at least once in the past 12 months. And this is extreme because it's at least one. So these are this is kids who normally, well, in their age group, they the um, pediatric association says pediatric association recommend parents to take the kids at least to the checkup at least once a year. And we're talking about the odds of this group to be 
to, to visit the doctor at least one and a half to uh, 12 months is much lower than compared to a native family, a children born from a native family. And it's even citizen children, so not only no citizen children, but citizen children. So children that probably were born here and their parents are foreign born, they also are affected by or have a negative effect on having a foreign born parent in their family, so having an immigrant family. By parental nativity and child's race and ethnicity, so it's always not citizen children are the ones that end up being, uh, having the lowest odds to visit the doctor at least once in the past 12 months. Something that is interesting, and I'm gonna see a pattern in all these things, and I have to say this from the beginning, is that uh, when I look at health status, something switched in a very interesting way. All these groups that becomes having the, uh, the worst outcome in terms of healthcare use and uh, health access, they have the best, or at least the best, better odds of um, health, um, perceived health. This is self-reported data, okay? So these are people when they receive the call, they say what they think and they, they, they perceive what they perceive of, about the care. So these groups, Asian and Hispanic children of immigrant family and no citizen, interesting enough, they end up having a better odds on having a excellent, a good to excellent health. So something is, is interesting here already because you will say if they don't use the service, then you will assume that they're healthy and in good condition. By parental region of birth, this is the groups I'm telling you, Latin America, Africa, uh, Middle East, Asia, Europe, and um, well, it's the US, I, I, I put US like uh, North America, including Mexico, yep, I put Mexico and Latin America. No citizens of children of Latin America and Asia and African families have the lower outcomes than visiting the doctor or having initial rates of care and negative marginal effects on their parents being from this particular area. But again, uh, this group with no favorable outcome is not to see how the health service are also the ones who are the more optimistic, and I call it optimistic because this is their perception, unhealthy with their children. So we have, and there is a lot of stories that we can tell in this, why these findings are coming, or where these findings are coming from, but it's, it's very, uh, unusual to see, uh, to see it, especially in the literature there has been some discussion but no the actual findings or numbers. Just to show you a little bit of the summary, summary of the data. Um, <coughs> the, ch the child being a citizen and the child not being a citizen, we can separate it into whether the parents are either born or foreign born and the no citizen ch uh, child with parents that are foreign born. Really, the population of no citizen child with US born parents is so minimal already. Actually, it's statistically insignificant. So that's why we separate the groups in three, and we see that no citizen children with foreign born parents end up being the group with the lowest uh, proportion. And this is a summary data, so the lowest, the lowest percentage of having visited the doctor at least once. In terms of health, we kind of see the three groups very equal. So in terms of, of the comparison across group, the percentage are very similar. So foreign born families perceive that the health of the no citizen children is as good as the health of the citizen children of native families. In terms of initial rates of care, this is what we see a very big jump. No citizen children of, no, of immigrant families tend to lack of usual place of care. And what I mean, usual place of care is that, is when you go, you're still sick, where do you go? Do you have a place that you usually go to? 27% of the non-citizen family, immigrant family of non-citizen children say no. And then, well, 